Good evening, iRacers, racing fans, wherever you are. We are here at Circuit Spa, Francochamp. Alex Simpson and Sam Fitzpatrick for the AOR Formula Renault 2.0 Championship. Yes, well, Spa, Sam, what a fantastic circuit this is. We've got one sort of endurance race, if you would have it. No sprint races, no, no feature races today. Just straight on, um, straight on for the big one. And uh, yeah, what a fantastic circuit this is. Formula Renault be suited for it i think we're going to see some great battling huge long straights really good opportunity for everyone to um, use that draft and get some moves done and get some exciting racing going yeah no doubt this is one of the uh, best driver's circuits in the world and also one of the best racing circuits in the world so it should be should be a fantastic event today uh, like you said an endurance event today as such one hour long a little bit longer than we usually have but it should be a, a fantastic event, as you said, and looking super competitive out there, as always. So, yep, looking like a uh, good event. I just want to ask the, the, the viewers something as well. You would have seen my little messages at the start as well. Just uh, our streaming machine decided to do the feature update 20 minutes before the broadcast, which is always a bit of a panic. But, uh, yeah, Adam had the same thing the other day, and it reset a load of sound levels. So could, um, could you guys let us know on the chat? whether or not we, we sound about right, because honestly, I haven't had the time to do it. It's finished and I've had to jump straight into it. So apologies for the unprofessionalness, but what I don't want to do is start the race and you can't hear any of the cars or anything uh, in the background. And to that extent, we'll, uh, we'll switch over <laughs> to the qualifying straight away, I think. Um, Sam... Obviously, a uh, new name at the top of the uh, standings at the moment. We haven't seen him for a little while, but uh, yeah, we, well, I personally know him well. Obviously, uh, used to drive in um, Apex Racing, and um, we saw him in this car in the Formula Renault um, BSR series uh, last year. Very, very quick. Probably the fastest AM driver um, in that uh, series. Couldn't manage to uh, string the championship together, and I think that's always been josh's sort of little thing that he's got to work on getting those results just um you know turning those that hot performance into race results but uh looking good already in qualifying yeah absolutely looking uh, really strong out there only marginally faster than stefan herman of course this is a uh it's a five kilometer track 4.9 kilometer circuit so um actually no no it's 6.9 isn't that i think i'm um yeah 4.4 miles i think uh, some kilometers and uh, only uh, one and a half one hundredths between them and now Kessler goes to within uh, five one thousandths of Josh Thompson so super competitive and now Phil Reed goes fastest of all he beats Thompson by three one hundredths so yeah very close out there currently around such a long circuit and yeah like I said Josh uh, yeah used to race in the uh, uh, in the BSR Formula Renault series and he's looking very strong out there because no Rene Osterkamp today the championship leader and surely championship winner um, in a couple of rounds uh, but he's not around today so certainly an opportunity for these uh, other drivers because Rene has taken the previous three endurance races in this series I think so should be a, a great chance like I said to uh, all these other guys and uh, yes yeah, looking uh, super close up front Yeah, uh, does Osterkamp, he, need, he needs to race though, doesn't he? He hasn't won it at this point already. He's not just sort of going, yeah, thank you very much. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, Kerry Norton gets pole, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, bangs in a um, yeah, lovely time there. What was that? Oh, and now Godan. Well, it's all change. <laughs> yeah, I thought Godan was having a little bit of an off day because Godan's been so quick in the past few, uh, past couple of uh, rounds. He's been... He was right there with Osterkamp at Donington and beat him fair and square on pace and strategy. And then at Brands Hatch, he was a, a match as well. He was certainly second fastest that day, got a little bit unlucky and couldn't quite uh, perform quite as well as he would have wanted in qualifying. But I uh, thought he was maybe having a little bit of an off day, but he's right there and he's looking strong for a pole position right now. Can I see what Kessler's doing? He's going to be the next to cross the line. Uh, what does he need to find? He's going to need to find, well, a quarter of a second would get him pole position. So it's not a huge amount, um, but 
not necessarily easy, but of course this car just gets faster and faster and faster. So this is why the times are sort of tumbling down. And I think we're going to see a few more people jump to the uh, the top before this uh, qualifying session is done. What does Kessler do? Does he improve? No, invalid, I think. No, yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Thompson. I'm not sure why. Ah, uh, maybe he's paint still loading, trading paint. Still got a few to, to get, I believe. Oh, gets a little moment coming off, but gets a good run. What's this going to be? Oh, no. Herman goes top. So uh, Herman now is top. He goes uh, two uh, quarter of a quarter of a tenth faster than Godant. So uh, this is a fantastic qualifying section, I must say. In the uh, usually in this series, maybe there's like a big lap early on, and then you know it kind of calms down. This is really sizzling up now, and yeah, reaching boiling point. Kerry now coming up to the line as well. Oh, session's over. He didn't make it. <laughs> so that Still is. Sad. That. Uh, yeah. Well, good qualifiers. I think that's a sign of things to come, I believe. So, um, Sam, would you mind doing the honors and taking us through the grid? Absolutely. Stefan Herman takes pole position. I think that's his first of the season. He's been improving <laughs> yeah. recently, and uh, yeah, awesome uh, uh, luck from him. Jean-Francois Godin in second place. He'll be looking for the win today. Kay Nolden in third. Charlie Summers in fourth. Phil Reed in fifth. Josh Thompson in sixth. Uh, Patrick Kessler only quarter of a second off pole in seventh place. Uh, he, he's still going to have a great chance at the race win, I think. Uh, Julian Mojak in eighth. Christian Takax in ninth. Watch out for him. Lexi Sorokin in tenth. Luke Barton, eleventh. Scott Newton in 12th, Daniel Morris in 13th, Sarah Dove 14th, David Butzla in 15th, next Lieberman, March, Asta Hay, Erka Lindstrom, Robert Plumley, Tom Van Heumann in 20th, Alec Hudson 21st, Andrew Woodhouse will be rooting for him in 22nd, Jordan Pierce in 23rd, another guy who will be uh, rooting for is Joseph Ringrose in 24th, Martin Sluman in 25th, Evan Imray, 26th, and then the drivers who didn't set a time, Manuel Hoyer, Glenn Key, and Connor Ryan, rounding up the field. Yep, looking forward to this one. Just waiting for a few guys to make their way to the grid. Looking down from the, uh, I'm going to say, the Goodyear blimp. Hasn't been the Goodyear blimp for a very long time, has it? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt I was even alive back then. Yeah, probably not. Final few, just making their way. Really looking forward to this one. Here we go then. Lights are coming on. AOR Formula Renault 2.0 series is away. Someone is starting from the pits. I'm not sure who that is. Great first corner. No contact. It's normally absolute carnage at Spa. But so far, so good. Looking a bit tasty going up through a rouge. Too wide, a few deep. Everybody somehow... No! Oh, that's oh, so close. I think that was Herman, wasn't it? He had to get out of it. Or was he was going to just clip Nolden there. Oh, no, of course, going for the lead. He's completely swamped now. Gary's got the run, he's got the speed. Will Godin be able to fight back before Lacoum? Thompson come in up the inside as well. They're almost three wide going into Lacoum. He loses out to Charlie Summers. Scott Newton, I saw, was changing positions out there as well. Just behind them, Daniel Morris as well. He's side by side with um, uh, uh, March <laughs> as well. So, but uh, everyone's clear. Good first lap so far. No, I think we might have had one casualty. Have we got one casualty. Um, well, um, I'm looking at. I think had an issue. Yeah, I'm looking at Hoyer as well. We've got Hoyer and um, uh, Glen Key in the pit lane right now. So something's happened somewhere. 
it was incredible uh Nolden's run down uh down the camel straight he, he just got into the slipstream didn't he? he 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 was fighting for he was in third going up into a rouge and then barely high Seemed to have lost you for a second there, uh, Sam, sorry. But yeah, you're right, he got an absolute epic run. And then, um, yeah, just, uh, I mean, I think that's always the case in Spy. You never really actually want to be the pulser. It's always better to be sort of second or third as Thompson's still fighting with uh, Charlie Summers back in, uh, in for fifth place now. And uh, Thompson through. Are you back, Sam? Can't hear you at the moment. Phil Reed as well, closing in on the tail of that is I'm not sure who that is. It's actually Herman and Reed, but it's uh live live timing screen's having a bit of a mess up at the minute. It's not really sure what's going on. As uh, behind them, they're battling again, side by side, Summers and Thompson. I think that one's going to go on for a little while. Kessler as well. He's got Luke Barton right next to him as they go into the coom for the second time. We have lost Sam for the moment. Hopefully he'll be back. Oh, look at this battle behind as well. This is, um, yeah, who's got into that? Sorokin's got in there as well. Newton right at the back. And um, Daniel Morris too. Great little fight. Uh, we've lost, lost Lubery. Something happened to him in the PSR orange car. He's dropped down. Woodhouse has just gone past Hudson. What's going on with Hudson? Ah, oh, he's around, coming out of no-name corner. That's easy done. Let's see if we can get a replay of that. Oh! Just about. I've got some wing damage there. I think he just got clipped there, which caused that. What's going on at the front? Because uh, John Francois got in, trying to close back in. Great run into Blanchemont. Ducks out. Nolden defending the inside. Got in having to look around the outside. He's got to keep this overlap all the way around the outside. Just can't quite get the car stopped and turned at the same time. Has to give up that little fight. They're battling behind as well. Reed and Herman, a pole sitter. Got in having some connection issues there as well. Summer's looking to try and work his way back towards these guys uh, fighting at the front. Important for uh, him to try and hold on to that position ahead of Thompson. Thompson obviously is just settling for a little moment. We've got an hour. We've got a pit stop um, to uh, to deal with here. Lots to uh, lots to go on as uh, side by side then for second place. We've got Reed. He's uh, had to concede the position to Herman. Herman through. Finally, will he now be able to set his sights on the front two? Because actually, they are pulling away ever so slightly. Last time by was a good couple of tenths of a second. Let me get you that live timing link in a second. Someone was occupying our room for some strange reason, so it wouldn't work. But uh, I will get you an alternate link. There we go. Try that one. Let me know. Scott Newton and Sorokin. Uh, sorry, Luke Barton. Very, very close. Sorokin just behind them. Let's look at the uh, sort of closure speed we're going to get down here and into uh, Blanchemont. Sam, are you back? I can't. I can't hear you. 
Yep, I'm uh, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, no worries. Yeah. Just let me know when you're all connected back up, and we'll uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get you back in. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Newton now then. Oh, he's got a great run. He's going to have to go to the outside as well. We'll stay on board. Oh, a little nick of the grass under braking. Just upsets the balance ever so slightly. Barton having a little twitch through the bus stop as well. <clears throat> Holds on. Great little battle. And um, Herman, he had a great lap, but still under pressure from uh, Reed. Uh, he was quicker than actually um, the front two. So I think it's in Reed's interest to let him try and drag him back. But he's not having any of it. He's straight back past battling again. All the time they do this, they're losing just a little bit of ground on the leaders. And um, Herman showed his pace. And uh, yeah, he's not getting a chance to, uh, to get back to them at the minute. Reed can't quite get by. Summers closes in as well as they battle. Yeah, this is looking like a terrific battle. So I'm now back into the uh, back into the session. Summers, yeah, he's looking really feisty, isn't he? And uh, yeah, th are these two teammates, uh, Herman and Reed? Oh no, 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 they're not. Oh, uh, so. Herman, Herman um, uh, is teammates with uh, Godden, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Reed is uh, AOR uh, Purple. So yeah, but um, yeah, who would you say is faster out of, out of these? two teammates then because um i know it, it almost seems as they're, they're holding one another up or, or are they well i think um i think herman's slightly quicker than uh, Godin, to be honest he showed that with quality and actually he got one clear lap in and he was straight into the 16s and closing back in but again reed having a little battle with him every time reed sort of does that kind of um just sort of prevents uh, uh, uh herman getting back to his teammate but yeah, I can understand. Obviously, it's a uh, you know you want to get through, but it's I mean, okay. It's an hour race. It's not an endurance race, but yeah. sometimes you got to oh, uh, got to let it go. Yeah, through blanche him on, and uh, doesn't really force Herman wide, but Herman just sort of deciding to run out there just to be safe. Oh, lock up as well for Reed. Not quite got the line right like that. They gotta be careful. They'll. Uh, They've pretty much let Summers back in on this battle now, and uh, Thompson's not too far behind him. Those guys, I feel, they won't be too shy in putting a move in. Yeah, Kessler struggled to make up some progress, hasn't he? I, I really thought uh, Kessler would be kind of fighting for the podium, because or, or at least like on the back of this chain. But if anything, he's kind of being left behind at the moment. But. We'll wait to see if he comes back into this one. Um, and now, oh my goodness, three wide down the camel straight. Oh. And uh, Herman just about pulls ahead. And oh, down the inside goes Summers. This is going to be brave. And he just about makes it through. And here comes Reed down the inside. And who's getting involved there? It's a spin. That was contact between the two of them. That was. Um, that was Thompson round and potentially out of the race. What happened to Thompson? Uh, let's see if I can get this back on replay. Yeah, he just tried oh, to go through. Oh, got oh into, um, yeah, he got into Herman, didn't he? And um, Herman sort of got sideways and then, yeah, Thompson come off worse. And I think that's going to be his race over. It's really disappointing because in, in practice, I, I, I was like, um, he, he, you know, he was caught to a second faster than anyone else, so he really had the pace to win this one. And um, yeah, he's uh, he's not happy on the chat, let's say. Well, I'm not really sure what he's uh, what he's got to be unhappy about, really, because um, you know he stuck his nose in there. He was the one that could have got out of that. So I did, I did allude to something at the start of the race. Sorry, Josh, <laughs> but uh, you know. You got the raw talent, mate, but just, you know, you don't need to go for those moves. No one passes there. <laughs> yeah, now Reed looking for the move on Summers, but um, not quite close enough. So, uh, just think, was it, it was, um, it was Summers then who's gone up two positions on that lap, I think, and Reed stays in four. So I think it was Reed making the initial 
me. Summers kind of picked up the pieces and yeah, it's ended up in P3, but they're they're over three seconds behind now due to all this uh, all this battling. Just sorting out. Uh, sorry for a second. Uh, I just uh, we got informed that there's been actually a um, a changing uh, in the guard, if you would have it, for uh, Phil Reed. He's now uh, with Team AOR Orange. So I just updated his uh, team name and his little slash to represent, but I can't get it to update on the live timing. Strange reason. Was that uh, Orange? He, yeah, he's now Orange. So yeah, okay. he's now teammates with Kerry. So obviously doing uh, uh, doing an extremely good job as well. All right, let me try this one last thing. Yeah, and he easily managed to move up into third position. So I think Kerry on that first lap was so quick down the straights. I really wonder maybe because they're just so kind of effective down these straights and making plenty of overtakes. Whether they're, they've got a little bit of a lower downforce setup, but Reed has already managed to drop Summers quite a bit. And the, the, yeah, these two Team AOR Orange drivers look uh, look really strong out there. Yeah, absolutely flying. Got in good, but you just can't keep up with Kerry. Uh, Kerry nailed the uh, qualifying really early, didn't he? Got to the top, but he didn't improve. And, and he could have well been on to um, improve his pole position, or what? Sorry, grab pole position that final lap, but couldn't quite make it round. I don't know if there was an invalidation somewhere. Yeah, Kessler's now up to fifth place. I, I mentioned how I expected him to be a little bit further up, but he's already under pressure for Mojak now. So, uh, also Mojak, and Mojak's having a terrific race out there. The, the team AOR drivers, I think, are doing really well around this circuit. And Mojak will be, uh, will be loving this, mixing it with, you know, one of the best drivers in this series, currently second in the championship. Kessler's still got a chance at the championship, of course. And uh, Mojak is, is uh, keeping up really well with it. Now, here's Takax coming and under pressure and uh yeah just about hung onto that one from uh from pierce just behind i wonder if you had a bit of damage or something but oh and let's go off the but, circuit yeah that was uh, that was rob plumley wasn't it ah, so recovering yes. out of nowhere it's like hello rob <laughs> surprise <laughs> <laughs> oh and uh summers has got back past reed so um that was uh, so Summers just came right back. I think this is the slipstream effect, where if you're kind of w within a second, kind of going uh, after the second sector of the lap, you've got such a great chance of just gaining the slipstream for the next kind of minute or so, because it's, it's all straights and slow speed corners. And again, that slipstream effect is just so dominant down that the, the uh, camel straight, these drugs are making it look easy. You got that six tenths of a second behind. You're going to get enough of a run. It's just such a long run. You flat they're flat out for so long. Come out of uh, out of turn one through a rouge and up that up the uh, straight. It's no wonder they're getting it done. They're trimmed out a little bit as well. So yeah, it's uh, it's not done and dusted. I think these two are going to be exchanging positions for uh, for a little while. Well, I don't really understand why they don't just uh, kind of follow one another and just save a bit of fuel because. If you can go a lap further than your rivals with fuel, that's going to be such a massive, massive, uh, uh, massive advantage. Because the, 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 if you've got, a, let's say, 30 less litres in the car, you think how much straight line speed that's going to give you. You may as well just stay in behind, don't lose each other time battling, because they're clearly very equal on pace and got the pace to challenge Godin. Yeah, I think you're right. And obviously, saving time in the stop you know is all important as well i mean i know the fuel goes in relatively quickly um so we're not talking massive time like it would be say with the gts but it still gets you out and still gets you the margin enough that you can actually break the draft i think that's the uh, that's the key thing and um all the time they battle they are losing a little bit of time to the to the front runners i mean they're still in in the in, we're not too far away oh what's going on I think I've just been disconnected from the server. Oh, right, okay. Oh, no, 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 we're back. Whoa. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I heard your voice go a little bit there. Um, I thought that was me. No, fortunately, we're okay. We're still here. We hung on by the skin of our teeth. 
Oh, we're there. <laughs> oh, Batsel again. Here comes Reed. Coming back, back through. Summers seems a little bit defenseless and actually using the slipstream from Godan. And that was enough. There. Oh, wow. Summers nearly went into the back of Reed there. But Reed was clever there. Just used a little bit of slipstream. And Moyak's now got the position on Kessler. So Moyak having a brilliant day out there. I can't remember him being quite this competitive. He's, he's having a fantastic day out there. Yeah, he's loving it right now, isn't he? And um, Kess has had sort of like a, a good season. He's a very consistent driver, and I think that's kind of the way way he works. He's not really shining or anything like that. When we first come in, I really picked him as uh, you know one of the absolute sort of front runners. But I think he's he, he's he's good. He's very quick, super consistent. He gets his results through not making that many mistakes. And uh, yeah, just struggling a little bit to stay with the uh, the very top guys this week. But I bet you, I'll tell you what, at the end of the race, I think he's still going to be there or thereabouts, looking at, sniffing around a top five for sure. Yeah, definitely. And Luke Bartz is another driver having a great day. There's quite a few kind of drivers doing, really, really punching above their weight. And that's not because of the, the low quality of, of racing out there. Sleeman makes a move because, um, you know, Luke Bartz is beating Sorokin, uh, Newton, Dove. Um, several others who, uh, Her like of course Herman's down there he's beating several drivers out there who would normally be fighting for the uh, top position so uh, 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 really good to see these uh, these uh, drivers really punching above their weight yeah I agree and um, I think Spa's a track where you can really just sort of you know, some drivers sort of excel at, you know, really enjoy driving it. Or oh, who's that? Is that Newton got into pits? So Newton, the first person to jump into um, the pits then, really. I wonder if he's got a bit of damage because he was really struggling out there with Newton. Newton usually struggles a little bit in qualifying and then uh, brings it back in the race. But he, he was just struggling so much out there. I wonder if he's coming in early because he had some front and wing damage. Yeah, it could be something that we couldn't quite see. Easy move for uh, the Kessler there. Back past yeah. Moyak. <laughs> yeah, that's going to that's gonna be very similar. That battle's just going to rage on. To Rockin and Barton again going at it. Tough defence there from uh, from Sorokin. He's just made that overtake, I think, down the Camel straight. But Barton's still right there. Because he is, as long as he just stays within, you know, half a second through these next few corners, he's guaranteed to have a chance very, very soon on the next lap. These slots are actually quite far clear. There's a five second gap between Morris and Lindstrom. So they do have a little bit of an opportunity to fight. And once again, really defensive there from so Rockin and Barton's going to go round the outside here. This would be an awesome move. He's going to have the inside for the next corner. They're still side by side, still side by side, heading down the hill now. And Barton just has to back out. That was an awesome effort, but just couldn't quite make it. He's still right in range, though. Yeah, great. Great battle. And... Uh... Who's that behind? Daniel Morris closing in all the time they're battling. So he needs to get this move done. So he can start to pull back away. Around the outside, through Blanchemont. Doesn't get run wide, there's plenty of space. And back through. And Morris is right there as well now. So. Oh, and into the pits he goes. So <laughs> he's like, right, thanks, guys. I'll uh, use that little bit of slipstream to catch up. And now I'm in. Fastest lap of the race for Charlie Summers that time by. So, a, uh, yeah, 216.24. Uh, and he's right on the tail of uh, Godin now. And I feel like this is going to be like taking candy from a baby as he goes to the outside. If anything, he may have had to uh, pull out a little bit earlier than he wanted. Hasn't quite got the momentum. And here comes uh, Reed from nowhere. He might get the pair of them. Summers is going to try to hold on to it round the outside. He does well. But Reed nearly gained two positions. But Godan has lost two. That's just insane, isn't it? That you can lose two places down there just through the draft. So. 
But yeah, it's the way it is at the moment. Let's have a look at the uh, gaps out there as well. Jerry pulling away pretty comfortably now. 3.3 seconds, looking really, really strong here. Summers for um, Team AOR Blue, and then of course AOR Orange. So one, two, three for the AOR guys. Their fans will be happy. And God, and has dropped off so quickly. I don't know if he had some kind of slowdown, but he's already lost one and a half seconds to these guys. So um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think he may have had an, a slowdown to. Um, Lake Coombe, but I'm, I'm not sure to be honest. I don't know where you get that to be honest. I don't know where no. you get a slowdown there. Unless he had a slowdown coming over the crest. Well, maybe. And um, yeah, he tried not to serve it, tried to hold on to him and then slow him up through Lake Coombe, but of course it didn't work. <laughs> Still this battle between uh, Kessler and uh, Yuri. Yeah, Yui, I imagine, might just stick in behind her. It's not really any point in overtaking down into this one. But if I was Yui here, like, you, you're, you're actually still in range, I'd say, of the, the three drivers, second, third, and fourth. I, I just think if you can save a load of fuel now, it's something different, because if he just fights with uh, Kessler all day long, the best he'll finish, I think, is fifth, unless something happens to the guy's head. If he goes for like a really alternative strategy, so just goes as long as possible. Could really get him in the mix for a podium by the end of the race. You're right, he can out the lap, the car will be light, tyres will still be good, the overcut seems to be the way people um, go here very off, very rare do they go for the undercut. So um, I think Newton obviously came in just to get out of the battles that he was in, as uh, once again they're going to go side by side down this Kimmel. I think they're side by side for uh, second place as well. Let me just see. Yeah, we uh, they were. The position. And Moya gets the position as well. Well, I don't think there's there's, any, there's no defence, is there, to that? That's the thing, you know, the guys are clear past before the break-in zones. Nothing really that they can do. Another battle going on out there right now. Oh, and that is um, Alistair Hay and uh yeah david uh, Boutelot. so two teammates but the red and the blue version and uh yeah exchanging position for 11th and 12th at the moment and uh barton and uh sarah as oh, well Dove's had, yeah. oh, Dove's bump. barton i think had an issue beforehand and now yeah uh, Dove, uh, he made a mistake and so nearly managed to take out plumley as well to see exactly what yeah. happened. Oh, yeah, there's, oh, wow, there's that's Barton. Big... That's a random place, isn't it? And then what's... Uh, stay with this, then, and we'll see exactly what... Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah, that checked her up a bit, didn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> got through, no contact. Actually, so careful when rejoining. Of course, the uh, spotter will have called that. Got to be on your toes. And then what's... I think she's just going to lose it out of here, isn't she? Oh, early on. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was very early. In the middle of the corner, just drifting through there. Unusual. Um, yeah, like, the amount of times I've lost it on the Astrid uh, on the outside there. I really expected it to be that, but nope, just lost the rear end early on. Must be the low drag that they're running down here. Battle on the brakes then. And uh, that is comfortably one by uh, Luke Barton. That was impressive. I thought he'd overshot that by yeah. a mile. The way he comes steaming in there, but you can only imagine um, uh, Lindstrom was just a little bit more cautious going in there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, Luke's going to be too happy right now after that mistake because he was having such an awesome run and a mistake like that, you know, it, undo and it undoes, you know, half an hour of good laps that. So um, I think Lindstrom might have a chance coming down here. I think Barton's trying to break the slipstream ever so slightly. Lindstrom will still get in though, and uh, you know, yeah, th th he's going to be in range at the very least because the slipstream effect is absolutely incredible. Right in the toe now. Will he go to the inside? He goes to the outside, does Lindstrom? Will he be braver on the bricks this time? And he just backs out in the end. He oh! oh! Well. Carried a bit too much speed in there and braked and a bit too much steering lock in that and uh, yep. Just about uh, 
just about gets it recovered. And now my other machine wants to do <laughs> the feature update. Oh, don't do it. I literally cancelled it. I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> Good old Windows. Button in just when you least need it. This one is still raging on Summers V Reed. And uh, Summers just about hanging on at the moment. They, I think they just change positions every lap, these yeah, two. Yeah, um, exactly that. They're still pulling away from Godan, which is good. Um, he's now pulling away from Moyak and Kessler, so not too bad for Godan. He's still looking good for that P4. I wonder, um, I wonder if Godan's got a little bit more fuel on board because it, it's been so unlike him in recent rounds for him to be, you know, not not but the fastest driver of everyone it just seems a bit odd I, I, it could just be the setup maybe these team AOR guys have just absolutely nailed it maybe he's gone for no drag and it's worked out brilliantly yeah it's possible what's happened to his teammate his teammate has pitted as well he came out behind Morris he had a long stop so I don't know if that was damage from Herman I'm, I'm guessing it was wasn't it because it was contact with Thompson but um yeah, they were quick. They were very quick, so especially in Q, but yeah, just not quite holding on to it in the race. Yeah, and side by side again now. And Reed should go ahead of Summers. I don't know if this is like some kind of... Uh, oh, I, I'm going to offend some cycling fans here, but is it the, the Kieran? The, the, the cycling event where they constantly swap positions? And oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Each exactly. other follow, yeah. you know. I don't know if it's something like that because they seem very happy just to let the let the let, let the uh, track position go. And, and frankly, they're getting enough of a run that actually they haven't got to get out of it in the corners. So it kind of makes sense. I can see how they're actually gaining a bit of time potentially doing that. That said, they're not as quick as um, as what Nolden is. Nolden banging in regular sixteens, and there's these guys are switching between sort of seventeens and sixteens. Yeah, one lap. Well, the, the driver who overtakes on a lap does a 16.5 usually. And mm. the driver who gets overtaken does a 17.0. And then Nolden's doing a 16.7. So you All can kind of see. Yeah, yeah so it, it's just maintaining the gap at the moment. Back up to four seconds. I think it's the first time that's been up to four seconds, actually. So, uh, yeah, they've lost a little bit of time. This lap is within six tenths, though, as some as uh, Reed. So should be able to get the position back. And Kessler's actually dropped out of the slipstream of Moyak, so Moyak may actually be able to hang on to this P5 now. He's flying. I mean, he did a 16.99 last time, so he's closing in on Godin. Godin only did a 17.2. So there's Godin. And then, um, uh, and there's, sorry, uh, Yuri. So really not a lot of great deal of time in there. What's the... Intervals 3.3 seconds at the moment. They cross the line and it's another tenth of a second gained as well. So hunting him down at the moment. Yeah, the uh, second fastest driver I think on that last lap was Mayak. So he's uh yeah, he's still looking really strong and could definitely bring this one back. Godan ever so slightly caught up to the two ahead on that last lap, I think. But um, yes, and now side by side again. So I think Summers will now go back past here. And Summers does. And there's no resistance put up by Phil Reed. Summers a little bit deep there, but gets it stopped. So um, that routine is just continuing. But, but I, I'd say currently they're losing about a tenth and a half a lap to Nolden. But, you know, they're saving fuel. And they can probably go two laps further in this first stint. So it could really work out well for them. I think you'll do well to get two laps, to be honest, but they might get a lap out of it. Um, so they might gain that half a second, three quarters of a second back. Um, maybe a slightly shorter stop as well. So, you know, maybe a bit bit in the pits too. So I feel like if they could get back to uh, to Nolden, they'd be able to hold on to him with the draft. These guys seem really fast, really trimmed out. Got in earlier on, really couldn't do it. Good battle going on further back. Nice little grouping. Oh, what was that right behind as well? As uh, that is uh, Newton and uh, who is that? Uh, Sluman. Marvin Sluman. Yeah. 
and um, obviously Newton has pitted, Sluman has not. So good stop for Newton. Remember, he pitted really early, so it's not made as much progress as uh, I thought he would have done. I think it must have been damaged, mustn't it? Something's gone on there because he's come out way behind, like uh, Morris, and he wasn't that far behind him when he came in. So, yeah, issues there. I say way behind. Actually, this little group oh, is all very, very close. Just on my uh, timing screen. Yeah, he's into the pits. Okay. Yeah, no worries. You see him dropping down the order, but he's okay. <laughs> Obviously trying to do his thing for um, Team AOR, get the purple. See, if my OCD was to get the better of me, I'd be like, right, if we don't have at the end of this race, Nolden followed by Reed, we need Summers. Where's his teammate? Come on, I want all the little blue and orange slashes next to each other. <laughs> Come on, if you're going to have this kind of dominance, you've got to do it properly. So this time, Reed isn't going to get past Summers. It's not that important, but... Um, yeah, he just couldn't quite get the run there. Maybe we'll try it on the next lap, but not quite following the pattern they've been following recently. Uh, Summers on that last lap was actually four and a half tenths faster than Nolden, so they did manage to close back in a little bit. We'll see if he, they can uh, sustain that but back down to three and a half seconds now. Yeah, like you say, it's just sort of floating or there or there, isn't it, about? So... Yeah, it's four seconds actually to read, so they kind of, like you say, they made sizable gain that lap. I if they can do the same again, although Reed seems to be dropping back all of a sudden. Yeah, six and a half tenths. He doesn't want to fall any further back Ooh. than this, otherwise he may struggle to catch yeah, back up. I thought all of a sudden it was going to be seven tenths there as he went sort of through the S's. Should be okay. Well, come, yeah, he'll close back I'll in close down back. here and through Blanchemont. Got a great run out actually, already down. Closes in a tent, so puts himself in the sweet spot for the draft. And actually, I'll bet time by the time they get to the bus stop, he'll be right on him. Quite just be crazy, really, when you think about these tiny little cars. Oh, he's in. Oh, oh he spoiled. Spoiled. Just went on board. <laughs> I wanted to see the overtake. But, uh, yeah. Well, we'll have a little look at this one. Newton. He has got uh, Jordan Pierce ahead of him in the VRT E Racing White. And, uh, yeah, he'll need to get by. Uh, Jordan hasn't pitted yet. Yeah, Luke Barton is... into the pits. That's not a very good camera angle. <laughs> <laughs> Doves into the pits as well. So a whole bunch of people right now. See, it's Newton that needed to get past these people. And I think he's going to struggle, to be honest. It's really not worked for him at all, has it? So, like you said, the longer run seems to be better those early pit stops really really hurt they're still all in the pits and there it comes newton but they're going to be clear by a good few seconds so i generally think he's lost three or four seconds with that early stop yeah like i said earlier i think it was probably damage i think he probably got a little mm. bit of contact on the first lap or something because he was really slow to start off with he was making no progress um, against drivers he would he'd normally beat um, and uh, like I said he qualified P12 and he was still P12 in the race and oh, he's, still got, the he's still got the damage still got the damage right oh, now really? we just jumped yeah. on board of him you can see how he's having to hold the wheel to the left still making a move here though so ah, fair fair play to him as he came in got whatever there was some aero damage done got that fixed oh and he's struggling with the right turns and I'm not surprised at all you can't get a clean race, can Scott? Like, he's one of the oh. fastest drivers in this series, and yet every race he just gets involved in something, usually not his fault, Some, sometimes is. But um, I feel today it probably wasn't his fault on that first lap. But um, yeah, just been a, a really unlucky season for Scott because he's, yeah, like I said, he's one of the quickest drivers in the series. And Dove has just spun it again in the background. 
I think just, it was Dove at least. Yeah, it was. Just come out of the pits. Let's see. And get that back. Here we go. Oh, I just took too much of the inside curb. Same, same corner effectively, but just a uh, slightly different method. Yeah. So, um, so recently we've been doing quite a few bets on uh, on results, and I am I think I'm three three out of three, aren't I? I do so, believe um, you're three out of three. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to to make one back. So who who's gonna win the race? <laughs> okay, well, I really, I mean, yeah, thank you for that one. So, <laughs> you watch this. I'll just this will just curse him completely and utterly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, but like Ke but Kerry's gonna win the race. <laughs> I'm so sorry if that cursed you. You're like some bat marker out of left field, just gonna be like, hello. <laughs> uh, Godan's ahead of Summers. So that was a move, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know when that's been as well. I think Summers. Some... Oh, Summers made a mistake. So on that Reece, last lap, he did a twenty-one. Pitches. Yeah, someone's made a mistake on that last lap. He made a mistake. He had a slow sector one. Oh, it was a slow sector five. He lost four seconds in sector five. Don't tell me where that is. It's near the end of the lap, I think. But um, And uh, yeah, he's dropped down to third. Uh, on that note, uh, I'm going to go Godan to, to get four out of four. And uh, yeah, Godan will win this race. Oh, okay, sorry, wrong replay. So this is where... Oh, oh so wow. there we go. So that's what happened to uh, Summers. So a bit of an issue there. Just spun. Let me see if I can get a uh, a better shot of that. Ah, oh, she just took in too much speed. I'll be honest, he recovered it pretty well. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, wasn't too much. Looked good. But uh, yeah, not the fastest way around the bus stop, that's for sure. So Reed has pitted, so he's going to be well clear of uh, Summers now. He's going to come out and go, well, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> have to check well, your relative for a moment. Yeah, let's see what this lap time is, because I'm just thinking with this extra fuel, I wonder if he's going to struggle to get into the 16s, which is, well, I, I guess he, he, he can probably just run 17s to be fair, and he should still be ahead. Let's see what this time is. It is a 2 minute 17.2. Yeah, so... I don't know. I think it could be close between him and Summers. It's a good half a second to six tenths of a second, isn't it? By having to, um, you know, to stay out. So you are right. It's key to try and save that fuel. You know, drivers really could have made some gains. Just that one lap or two laps that they might be able to get extra. Got Lindstrom into the um, into the pits. He's away. He's coming out. Um, currently in 12th. Will he lose any more places? Who have we got? We're looking for... Um, but Evan Imre, we haven't spoke much about Evan today. Team AOR Red. And uh, yeah, he's about three or four seconds behind uh, Lindstrom right now. Both drivers have pitted. So uh, straight on fight to the end. But we've got 20 minutes to go here as well. Yeah, Imre could uh, be in for a decent result. Actually, he had a very short pit stop six seconds compared to Lindstrom's 18 so uh, yes yeah, clearly something going well for him and yeah he could be on, in, on for a, uh, another good result he's been really good actually recently as, uh, as Evan seemingly uh, quite a consistent top 10 I found that ninth, 10th position and uh, may not be a top 10 today but should still be uh, more solid points for him so we haven't seen much of Herman after the crash is he in sort of um same sort of position that Newton's in with that damage. The steering looks okay. Doesn't look like it's tracking too too bad. He did have to come in early, and I think that's why he's lost quite a lot of time as well, because he was stuck doing the slower times. Yeah, he's still ahead of Moyak though. Yeah, you, um... and, and actually times are good. 17.22 last time, so that's a fair chunk faster than what Morris is doing, a good seven tenths of a second. And um, similar sort of time on Hay. He hasn't pitted yet though. No. Uh, Phil Reed, 17.2, so lapping very quick, but yeah, unfortunately that collision, Thompson earlier on, is uh, somewhat cost him.
as uh, Hay jumps into the pits as well. Yeah, still the leaders staying out, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, and I think that's genuinely the right thing to do. You know, if you've got the pace with a bit of extra fuel, you know, just don't worry about um, coming in early. Just literally ring it out as far as you can. Uh, of course, it's always sensible to take as much fuel because then what you have to put in at the pit stop at the end of the race is, um, you know, is, is less. So if anyone's taking less fuel to start, that would be definitely unwise because you, um, you literally ask them to have uh, more time in the pit stops. Yeah, and that could be costly for Reed. Reed just did a 2 minute 17.2. His main rival, Summers, did a 16.4. So if someone's pits in now, I think um, Reed would have the advantage. But after that spin for Summers, he, he might still be able to claim that second place. And of course, uh, job one, I think, on that mission will, t will be to... Uh, past Godant, who he, uh, he is uh, closing in very quickly and once he gets within, uh, well I think at this age to be honest the slipstream effect should be able to, uh, to drag him closer 7 tenths of a second then down the back straight, <clears throat> has Summers got the slipstream, it doesn't look like it it looks like 7 tenths, you're just outside it, so you need to be in that 6 tenths window to uh, actually get the draft, so he'll need a good bus stop here, maybe get that run and hold him with a, uh, uh, an off track so, don't know what that was about oh uh, they all jump in oh, Nolden's only just ahead, isn't he also, Nolden must, I think Nolden may have had a spin at the bus stop yeah, it's Nolden who's just, like you say he's just ahead, Godden takes the lead oh no <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, okay I'll get it back on replay, I'm sorry <laughs> All of the fans as well. Oh, sorry, a glitch with the uh, with the timing as well. It's just not what we need. Right. Let's see if I can uh, show you where this has all gone wrong. How I cursed him so well. He must have been coming into the pits anyway. Oh, oh, yeah, I, I wonder if that was it. the reason. Yeah overcooked it got the line wrong so he's still ahead of reed so he's going to be in the fight i think that's the thing but all that hard work done you know yeah uh summers is now just 1.3 seconds behind you know what if godan can nail this in lap godan might be leading this race when he comes into the pits because he was ahead of summers when summers pitted by about half a second and with this uh, six tenths advantage seemingly from full fuel to empty fuel Godan might fancy his chances at the conclusion of this lap despite being I'd say probably the fourth fastest driver today throughout he may uh, he may be leading with uh, just 10 minutes to go yeah and uh, hasn't made him miss well he made a little mistake didn't he with the slowdown lost some time if he hadn't have had that where would he have been you know <laughs> Yeah, He'd definitely yeah. be in the lead right now. Yeah, he would have stayed in the slipstream, wouldn't he, of the two others. So he would have been right with them. Well, I'm looking to see if he's going to pit. Pretty sure will do. Keeping an eye out for uh, P2. You can see Kerry and the group of cars behind him now. Coming out of um, Paul Frere Corner. So that's the uh, advantage that uh, Godin's got. Here he comes then. The moment of truth. Or will be in 20 seconds time. Summer's within a second of Nolden. So it's, it's going to be a four-way bounce, I think, till the end of the race. Godin's going to be somewhere around those three and they're all going to be within kind of slipstream range of each other so it's just going to be a straight dog fight now between those four for the race picture I think yeah they're coming into the corner you can see now they're away look at how close that is that is ridiculous this is going to be great so they come up the hill but Godin has got it oh wow but he's got no momentum no Although I think Norden might catch him too quick he's going to have to get out of the throttle going up over region he's not going to have the overspeed here and this is really bad for Nolden. And you know what, Summers, if he can get an absolute awesome run from Eau Rouge, he's going to be right on these guys, side by side. 
perfect slipstream now for Summers. He's going to make this three wide, perhaps, but straight through goes. Oh my goodness! Knee make contact. Nolden's into lead. Can Godan fight back? He goes to the outside. Summers nearly hits him, and he's going to go wide here. Is Godan off the circuit? He goes. I think he's going to go down to four. Oh. He really takes out Reed, and Godan's gone from first to fourth. And now they're defending. Nolden having to defend from Summers. Summers going to go all the way around the outside. Nolden needs to hang on to this one because Summers looks like he's got a little bit more pace, but he just about holds on for now. Well, this is the question now. We said earlier on, if they had the slipstream uh, in Reed and uh, Summers, would they be able to keep with Kerry? And we're going to find that out right now as well. So it's Team AOR Orange against Team AOR, AOR Blue and another Orange. And then, uh, yeah. Godan's on his own, I'm afraid. His teammate Herman, who was very quick today, just not able to be in this fight. Well, now for these leading two, surely, surely it makes sense not to fight each other. Uh, I don't know. Surely you got to, you know, they're 10 minutes away. They can't pull away from each other unless they make a mistake. Surely it's just worth desperately not letting those two cars behind unless maybe um, do, do you think maybe Nolden feels like Reed could perhaps help him out later on? Mm, I don't know. There's only 12 minutes to go. I think you're not worried about it now. You're set sight. You're sorry. Your sight is set. I'm just looking forward oh, as they are battling behind. God and round the well, outside of the bus stop. That's going to be great. But of course, we're going to get the cut back for Reed. Reed gets the run. And. Uh, I don't think he's going to make it around the outside, but yeah, all the time these two are battling, they're letting them disappear as well. Wait, I pulled, uh, I said about redoing it earlier. I don't, you know, let's not do it again. But uh, I think Reed feels like he's definitely got the pace over um, Gordon. Yeah, and Summers, I think, is actually in perfect range, actually, of Nolden. It's about three tenths behind. And he's closing, closing, closing. He's going to have an awesome overspeed here. Nolden goes defensive. Summers goes to the outside. It's side by side behind as well. Summers going to try to muscle in his way, way around here. He's late on the brakes. He's going to have to back out late. And Nolden hangs on again. I think Nolden, Nolden I swear, is so quick down the straight. Like he, he's absolute rocket down there because previously we've seen Judge just swoop straight past. But I think Nolden has got a little bit less rear wing than the others. Godan also got the move done on Reed. So he, Maybe he can start closing in on these guys. Yeah, I think you're right. It might be trim, trimmed out quite a bit. And maybe Summer's perhaps just taken a little bit more than some of the others. Because, yeah, I would expected him to be clean through there. Another battle that's going on out there as well. Forget this. Eighth and ninth place. Very close. And uh, these guys... They haven't been battling together all race long, but actually they've been involved in something. And uh, the last real battle that we've got going on is between um, Sluman and Pierce. And we'll stay with this, actually, because I feel like Pierce could get a run this time. Oh, I think that might be a change for, for the lead, sorry. Oh, that's just, <laughs> that's just absolutely typical. Oh, here we go. Oh, Nolden defending. Summer's trying to go around the outside here, going into Blanchemont. Side by side through here, can Nolden fend off? He's going to try to get to the inside, Summers has to go to the outside, he's still in the slipstream. Now going to the outside, Summers, he can't make it. Godan is right there, with there. these guys potentially now. So um, these two have been scrapping too much. And uh, you know what, Nolden's got that little bit of a gap. He seems good through that bus stop, and can, uh, or not bus stop, but chicane. And it seems as though he can pull away a little bit and uh, Godan and Reed are catching right up to these two. The, the, uh, I'd say God and Reed look like the two fastest out there. Yeah, let's see. Uh, is Reed going to go for it this time? I'm sure Summers is going to. He doesn't quite look as close, does he, Summers, as he was last time, but certainly in that range that you were talking about. And um, all of a sudden, God loses the time. I mean, look at that. He's like 1.5 seconds. He falls out of the battle window because he's that much slower. And uh, straight through for, um, you, you're dead on with Kerry. He's so fast in a straight line. They pull out the slipstream, Reed, uh, sorry, Summers. He just can't get by. So he just can't keep the momentum. So 
He's going to have to really nail coming out of turn one, I think, and be absolutely on his wing and uh, trying to sort of force a move around the outside. But I feel like he's going to have to hold it. Maybe into the bus stop will be a better place for him. I, I think so. I think even if he nails the exit of T1, he'll just have to lift off up Eau Rouge and he won't get the overspeed going down the Camel straight. And then if he's not that close, you know, uh, I think Nolden's just going to be able to fend off the inside. So, um, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult for him. I think going into the chicane, chicane is going to be his best chance, like we saw last time. But he's, he's not really nose to tell right now, is he? He's just, you know, he's four and a half tenths back, but he's not quite close enough, I think. Reed as well. You can see him desperately trying to get inside that one second barrier. I mean, obviously, six tenths he needs for the draft, and he's going to drop back out now as uh, Summers close is back in on our leader but they're definitely closer behind than they were and Godin doesn't look like he's going to try and battle this time maybe <laughs> oh no I spoke too soon as uh, they're battling back at the front again but uh, not such a forceful move this time and settles oh, back in and uh, got Godin around the outside oh honestly they could they could catch these two they just they don't want to. No, yeah. <laughs> they're happy. They're happy battling for third. They don't want the win. We've got seven minutes to go here. Yeah, and in the background, I think you probably just saw Patrick Kessler. He's had a bit of a lonely race recently. He's somewhat near. He's um, he's seven seconds off the lead. So uh, if these four take each other out, he will be right there for the race victory, perhaps. But here we go again. Summer's in the slipstream. Oh, he's so close to the rear this time. He's side by side now. Let's see. This is going to be a great example of the drag between the two of them. Let's see if Nolden can pull back ahead. You know what? Summer's has got this speed. Summer's may be able to get a nose ahead and he might be able to swoop around the outside. Summer's goes for it. He's deep on the brakes. Can Nolden come back? But Summer's has got it. That time, Summer's seemed to have this best straight line speed, Alex. Yeah, we've just been told they are on different wings. 24 front wing against 6 rear uh, for um, for Nolden, possibly. And then 26 against 8. So it's just a couple of clicks. Nothing major, but it is making the difference. And uh, tell you what, look, they went side by side and battled a little bit through turn, uh, through the uh, uh, Lacombe section. And of course, that's let Reed back in with them now. So Reed is there this time and he's in the draft as well we saw how quick he was earlier got in trying to hold on to these guys he's just outside the draft It's super critical for him to get into that six tenths window otherwise he's going to lose him down this straight and into Blanchemont oh he's lost oh. it oh my goodness how did he hang on to that one but the what? top three are now nose to tail oh my goodness Summers that was as close as you like Nolden now right with them Reed right with them and Goldan's just watching this, waiting for an accident. And here comes Nolden down the inside, going into Blanchemont. Summers has got no reply, surely. Nolden with the incredible straight line speed again. Summers, all that great work to get into the lead. He's now back behind. Can he look for the inside? Can Nolden's teammate Reed get involved? Not quite. And now Goldan's right on these three. Fantastic racing here. We said this would be a good one. We've got five minutes to the end of this one. Just a few laps, really. Three, I think, was what we're going to get. And, uh, yeah, we're going to enjoy all of them. Sorry to the rest of the pack. There is a little battle going on for each place out there, but I don't think we can take our attention away from the very front. So here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think uh, the question is, is Reed on the same wings as um, as his teammate? If he is, then we're about to go three wide. Here we go. So Reed, can he look to the inside? Nolden lets him through almost, I thought, there. Nolden's oh! now boxed and he's trying to get to the inside. He can't do. And you know what? That was probably wise from Reed in the end, just to try to, you know, get out of that one because Nolden seemed to just box himself in there, didn't he? He, he had the inside line, then tries to pull back into the slipstream. Then his teammate managed to get through, and in the end, they managed to even, they nearly took each other out. I think he needed to get back in the slipstream. If he hadn't have done, then his teammate would have definitely have been passed. That's the thing. So, um, with uh, with them being teammates and not quite getting fully uh, fully passed, he kind of re kind of conceded that a little bit there, uh, just to make sure they didn't hit each other. The last three laps of the race. 
Gordon can't quite hold with these guys, can he? They're just a little bit too quick. He needs them oh, to um, to time. battle again. And uh, I don't know if that's uh, some of his tyres just feeling a little bit worse for wear because a couple of times now he's done that. And you know what these tyres are like as well. Once you start to heat them up and have little moments like that, you do drop off you know, time pretty quickly and you tend to have another slide and another. And uh, yeah, it just compounds the problem even more. Yeah, I think one thing I've noticed is that Godan's quick through the corners, seemingly struggling down the straights. I think he's really losing time with his uh, maybe a little bit more downforce. Let's see if Nolden can fight back here. He may have a go into the final corner, not quite close enough. And his teammate just, <laughs> they just need to make sure. You, you, I don't know if you've ever been in this situation, Axe, where, you know, you're working together maybe to win the race. But... Is it almost a bit distracting because you're, you're constantly thinking, I cannot possibly hit this guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, it, is a, it is a little. It's a lot easier if it's someone who you know you can just attack out there right now. And the person, actually, I feel for the most, but he's not under that much pressure right now, would be Reed. Because if Godden had a run, you know, he'd want, he would want to defend by breaking late, getting as much speed as possible. And that means he'll have to put his teammate under some pressure to do that as well. Let's just see if he has a little lift. He does oh, have a little does. lift. Okay. Yep, yep. So, and he can do that because Godden's not on them. He can't seem to get inside that half a second window. Oh, it matters. Wide. Someone's running just a little bit wide. It's going to put them all. Well, it's going to bunch them all back up again. Have we got one more after this one? Yeah, one more to go after this one. We've got 58 and a half minutes at this point. Oh, another little twitch. Summers his tires. He's just working oh, he's them wide. hard. Oh, dude, that's... Indeed. And now here comes Godan. Needs to get this one done straight away, but he can't quite. And no, he may go for the inside in to pull on. No way through there. They, these two are just losing each other time. This might be a duel now for the race victory between the leading two. And it might just be a pass for third between uh, between Reed and Godan. It's hot. It's seven tenths, six tenths. He might just sneak him in. He needs like the best couple of corners that he can possibly pull out. See if he can get back into that slipstream. For half a second, he's there. Just about hold, held on to that. That's so, so critical to get and into now that window. As well. uh, Godan's right into the slipstream. So he can stay with these guys and actually could be dragged along a little bit, I think. Well, there's no time to be dragged along. It's got to be done the next lap. Simple as that. If he's going to make moves, he needs to get by quickly. And uh, Nolden having a little look. Can't do anything. He's got the wings he, that he needs. I think he just needs to shape him up. I feel like he held behind him that last lap. Oh, oh that's not going to matter. Oh, can he get away before Kessler comes around? Yeah, he can. So he's fine. That'll be four. But is Reed close enough for the slipstream on Summers? The gap is nine tenths of a second. You know what? Summers might have this one. Yeah, I think I think you might be right because I think Godin's going to battle him here. He's got to. He's got to go for second, doesn't he? Ah, oh, he was just. You could. I could just tell he was trying to shape him up. He perfectly. It's like I'm right. I'm in a good position. I'm in second. You know, coming onto uh, the Kemmel straight. I've got this. And uh, there you go. And uh, got him with the run for second, clean through. He's nine tenths of a second back. Can Reed get back up the inside? No, he cannot. What's happened to Team AOR Orange in the final couple of laps? They looked so, so good for a one two finish. And all of a sudden, it's just come undone as a, as a little poke over the nose. Nothing happening. Reed. Eight tenths of a second. This isn't over for the win as well. Re oh, uh, God so quick through here. Oh, and actually he's blasted it through. <laughs> no name corner. Taking off a taking an incident point there. He doesn't care. He's desperate to try and get into that window. Ah, oh, Summers. Absolutely desperate to hold on as well. He knows he needs that six tenths of a second, half a second margin. It's just not gonna do. He's gonna come under pressure in the bus stop corner if they get there. Go on, still seven tenths. I think he's got it. I think he has got this one. It's going to be super close, but yep, no draft for um, 
for God in this time. So I think that's going to be a battle for second place, though. Reed then closing in. What's he going to do? Round Blanchemont. Inside, outside. Who knows? Oh, he has a look up the inside, but uh, got to try to defend it. It's a little bit on the curb. Oh, <laughs> Reed trying to get the inside. Can't quite do it. Round the outside, late on the brakes. Oh. Brilliant move. Absolutely fantastic move there. It's going to be a drag race. Summers is going to come across and win this one, though. And it is going to be Phil Reed wow. for second. What a fantastic move around the outside there on the final lap. Ah, oh. and um, yeah, I'm sorry, Kerry. I proper, proper cursed you. <laughs> so when when I get my double or nothing on this young little whippersnapper, <laughs> seems to be getting all these bets right. Then uh, don't worry, I'll sort you out. <laughs> oh, and uh, that battle between um, between uh, Barn and Yuri that we uh, couldn't really cover. That finishes as well. Good, good battle there. Well, thanks everybody for watching that. If that's not worth a like on the YouTube channel, well, I don't know what is. Fantastic race in there at Spa. Just waiting for the final few people to uh, come across the line now as well. Robert Plumley, he's coming across in 12th. Sarah, she had her issues today, unfortunately. A couple of spins really hampered her. Could have been an easy top 10 finish, I feel. Evan Imrate, he's coming across next. Team AOR Red, 14th place. Joseph Ringrose. He's going to come across in 16th. Rock King finished in 15th, sorry. I think that's points, isn't it? Um, in 16th. So that'll be... Um, Jay hasn't managed to get too many points, I think, so far this season. So uh, this would be a couple of nice little points for him as he comes across the line. Yeah, so, uh, gets that 16th. And Marvin Sluma, I think that might be his best result of the season as well in, uh, in 17th. Just waiting for the final couple of people. Great job from Summers, though. Absolutely fantastic. Um, held on to that. Got to the lead. Really, I think he was quite vulnerable. Uh, to, uh, yeah, Nolden gifted it to him with that little spin. Be kicking himself. He had two spins, didn't he, right at the end of each stint, you know? And uh, really, really cost him big time. First one, obviously, put him back in this pack, and then the second, yeah took away any chance he had really of a win right i have final standings uh, uh, available he says so i retrieve the positions mm -hmm. would you mind doing the honors please uh, sam of course charlie summers takes the race victory that's his second of the season no that's his fourth of the season so made a habit of this but his first endurance race victory well done to Charlie out there. Phil Reed, maybe could have won, but um, you know, is, we'll be happy with that second in the end after a brilliant move in the final corner. Jean Francois Godin didn't really have the pace of his competitors today, but uh, very nearly managed to take the race victory in the end. Comes home in third. K. Nolden, how close could it have been for him if only Alex hadn't up him for the race victory? He finishes <laughs> in fourth place, uh, but a, a great effort. Patrick Kessler. You know, he would have been thinking with a few laps to go, I could maybe win this with the chaos happening ahead. But still, more solid points for him in fifth. Daniel Morris, I think that's his best result of the season. 13th to 6th, great job from him. Luke Barton, likewise, really good result for him. 11th to 7th. Jerry Mojak in uh, in 8th. Uh, Lindstrom, 9th. David Butzelart in 10th, a little bit under the radar. He, he made some good positions. Stefan Herman got involved uh, in a collision um, with uh, another Josh, Josh Thompson he got involved a collision with and that really cost him maybe could have been fighting for the race victory but ends up in 11th Robert Planley finish is, finishes in 12th Sar Dove in 13th Evan Imray in 14th Lexi Sorok in 15th Joseph Ringrose in 16th Marvin Sluman in 17th Lubomir March 18th Connor Ryan 19th Jordan Pierce in 20th and it's Alec Hudson. As to Hay must have an issue out there because he was fighting for a top 10 early on. He finishes 22nd. 
Scott Newton, uh, he got, must have gotten involved in collision as well. Didn't have a good start, got some damage, and then had an incident with 10 laps to go. Um, and he finishes in 23rd. Christian Takac got involved in a collision, I think, on the first lap as well. He finishes in 24th. Tom Van Heumann in 25th. Andrew Woodhouse in 26th. We didn't see what happened to him. Just Thompson, of course, got involved in that collision in 27th. And then Manuel Hoyer and Glenn Andre Key round out the finishes. Fantastic race. Really enjoyed that. I mean, absolutely epic to the very end. And uh, what a fantastic move as well to get second place. Um, who have we got available for a chat? No one's come for an interview. It just looks like Joseph Ringrose. We'll bring him in, though. Say hello to our uh, colleague. Uh, Joseph, you're around? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Hi, mate. Um, yeah, well, um, well done. Some points for today, I believe. Yep. P16. So, yeah, happy with that then. Yeah, definitely. Um, makes a change to be in the top 20. Um, last time I got points was, I believe at Suzuka, and the only time I got points other than today. Um, I don't know what it is, but these 60 minute races definitely seem to be sort of better for me. Um, I was on points at the Norge Life, but it's the Norge Life, so, uh, you know things happen but i've literally had like no time to practice with exams and whatnot so it's been a pretty stressful week but to get p16 at the end of it is just you know means a lot to me yeah good yeah well done i mean we didn't see too much of your race because obviously there was four or five battles that were just absolutely epic through pretty much the whole race so apologies for that but so just sort of you know talk us through what went on any highlights that we uh, we need to uh, mention I mean, sort of the first stage of the race, I was sitting with Marvin Sluman and Jordan Pierce um, for a lot of it, uh, and Connor. We were sort of pretty close to each other overall, uh, pace-wise, because none of us had really had, had much time to practice. I don't know about Marvin, but me, Connor, and Jordan. But so we were sort of sitting around P17, 18, uh, towards sort of P21 at the start, and then it was. I was pretty much with them the whole race. Um, ran the tank down, pitted, and then came out P16. Uh, well, came out P18 and then gained a couple of positions from DQs and whatnot. But, I mean, I spun on the second to last lap, which I think would have cost me P15, and I spun once before. Um, so P15 could have been on the cards, but, I mean, Alexi didn't deserve to be down there. He He's not P15 pace-wise, so... I mean, P16 is, you know, the best I could have hoped for. wasn't really expecting that at the start. Yeah, well, well done, mate, on on a good race. And uh, will we see you on the track next week, or...? Um, I I need to decide whether I'm going to be racing at Indy or whether I'm going to be racing at uh, in the Indy Official Series or here. Um, see how practice goes, I guess. So, oh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next week. Awesome, mate. Yep, thanks very much. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you then. Cool. Which fancy, um, Sam? Um, well, he's. Um, well, actually, no, I'd quite like to see who, what happened to Scott Newton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Scott. Sam, how are you going? Uh, good, thanks. Good, thanks. Um, first lap. Or, or certainly at the start of the race, did you have damage? Because you, you came in early and you seemed to be struggling with pace early on. Uh, on the first lap, yeah, probably wasn't the best sort of, sort of start, just trying to avoid every uh, every other card due to net code and all that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, not so much damage in the first couple of laps, um, just mainly trying to fight for position. But uh, yeah, lap four, going through Blanchemont, had a bit of a net code incident um, with Barton, and that um, gave me some steering damage. And yeah, that pretty much put me out. Um, it was good practice for Indy 500 in the next four hours, but uh, yeah, not so much uh, at Spa. But then uh, later in the race, I was battling with uh, Jordan Pierce and then just got the death wiggle out of Mamadi. And that's why I uh, crashed with about 10 to go. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm unlucky with that. We, di we didn't quite see that. It was, I think it was during the yeah, pit stop sequences. So uh, we didn't quite catch that one. But um, next round, uh, 
I can't even remember which uh, which circuit it is, but is it a strong one for Montreal. you? Or Montreal, yeah, strong one for you. Um, season five, I finished second to to catch. Um, probably should have won that. That was probably my only time had a, a chance for a win. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of a uh, bit of a strong track for me. Uh, but uh, we'll have to see, to be honest, because um, yeah, last last time we were here. Um, there was loads of battles between myself and Hoyer, and um, yeah, we won't go into that. But um, yeah, there's a bit of a um, bit of a marmite track in some respects, but also a good one um, in the past. So yeah, we're definitely looking forward to it uh, next week. And um, yeah, sh- shall be on the track for that one. Yeah, because we've just got kind of four more rounds to go. Are you just like looking for maybe a? a standout race from now to the end of the season or are you, or are you just like hoping to rack up a few more points before the uh, season end? Yeah, definitely. The um, the target for this season was beating the 140 points overall, but uh, yeah, today's result definitely made that a little bit more difficult, but uh, with 52 points on offer for the final two rounds, it's still possible. So um, yeah, just looking to pick up at least 20 points each round and at least uh, get back up to where I usually am. But uh, yeah, in the T2 Championship, I'm probably out of the, the fight for the Championship now. But uh, obviously with drop rounds still to come into effect, um, I'm not sure where everyone else stands at the moment. So uh, we'll have to wait and see until they're applied. Yeah, and um, is there anyone you'd like to thank before we let you go? Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank all the guys over at Apex Racing UK. And uh, their sponsors, JCL Sim Racing, Leo Bodner, Sim Steering, uh, SDK Gaming, and obviously to uh, you guys for the broadcast. Yeah, cheers, Scott. Um, yeah, we'll see you next next week. No worries. All right, cheers, Sam. Right. Well, I think we've got to get the uh, I think we've got to get the winner in, um, but I think then we're going to call it a day. I'm afraid. Um... So let me grab Charlie. Uh, Charlie, are you can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you guys. You got me okay? Yeah, yeah. All good. Well, congratulations um, first. What a great race. Um, fantastic uh, all the way to the very end. Um, honestly, I thought your goose was cooked coming into the bus stop on the final, on the penultimate lap. I thought you were going to be cannon fodder up the camel, camel straight, but it didn't work out like that. And uh, yeah, you brought home the bacon. Definitely, I was uh, into the final corner. I was waiting for Kerry to come right up behind me, and then of course he spun. And I sort of sat there. Your mic's just cutting out a little bit, mate. I don't know if you can. Uh... Second, I'll see if I can. Uh, but. Is that any better? Carry on. Let's see if it is. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, I was expecting him to be all over me coming up the camel, as you said. I was hoping I'd be able to get it back into the final corner, but uh, yeah, didn't quite work out that way. But then I had the additional pressure of uh, don't be the guy who bottles it from the uh, lead on the last lap. Yeah. That's not what I wanted to do. So uh, yeah, just happy to bring it to the end in the position I did. Yeah, I think coming out of Paul Frere, you kind of knew that you had like that eight tenths of a second margin, so no real chance for them to slipstream up. And of course, they were battling behind then as well, which is just what you needed. But I mean, halfway through the race, you're a good sort of six, seven seconds off. I mean, it looked like it was just not on the cards at all. So uh, what was um, what was your thoughts when you came out of the box, uh, come out of the pits and everyone was just so close together? Well, um Basically, what happened there, as far as I saw, was uh, as Kerry was coming in, he had a sort of half spin in the same place I had my full spin. So it sort of brought us all back together. And given that Jean was only about a second ahead before pit stops, I knew it was going to be tight as soon as we came out. So it was just a question of uh, hooking myself onto the back of Kerry and just waiting for that moment where I can, uh, well, make the move. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, awesome, really. <laughs> I mean, um, you looked like you were running slightly higher downforce. I think we had some confirmation on that on the on the chat. Don't know exactly, but uh, uh, was that something that you decided to go for? 
So um, it was something that I'd ran in a race earlier in the week, actually, one of the official ones. Um, seemed to work well for me, but uh, after practicing, it felt like low, low, low downforce was giving me a decent enough grip. Whereas in the Thursday practice session, it seemed to be a bit too twitchy for me. So I didn't think I'd be able to keep it keep it on the gray stuff for the full hour. But uh, it felt good today. So, uh, yeah, I tweaked a little bit of downforce out. And I think that really helped when uh, me and Phil were sort of trading places and just working our way up through. And we commented actually on that a little bit. So um, do you think you were actually gaining time doing that or was it actually just sort of holding you about steady? Um, because obviously we were a bit like, oh, we think we, we think these guys can catch, but they're kind of just slowing each other up a little bit. What was your take on it? Well, um, it managed to get my fastest lap down to a 2.16.2, which put me three tenths clear of the next fastest, which was quite surprising because in the clean air, uh, me and Kerry were doing about the same lap times, so sort of 16.5, 16.6. But um, yeah, it just gave me that little extra bit that I needed to uh, slowly start closing the gap in because uh, you saw it was me and Phil behind uh, Jean. We managed to catch up Jean. And then as soon as we were past him, it was just right straight back into the groove. And then we uh, were working on closing down Kerry. So it's been a good run in to the end of this season for you. I mean, currently sat fourth in the championship. I don't know what, how it's going to be affected today. You're pretty close mm-hmm. to uh, to God and maybe even just nicked him today with today's results. So, um, you know, what's what's the kind of championship aim? I think the front two, I don't know with drop rounds and stuff, how it's panning out, but front two perhaps a little bit too far out of it. Third See, place that's... is what you're looking to hold on to. Yeah, that's the issue. So uh, I'm actually busy for the next two weeks. Ah, oh. <laughs> Yeah, gutting, I know. But... um. Yeah, I think this should just about put me up into third, sort of when I quickly did the math in my head. But uh, yeah, it's a question of whether Jean's going to make up the points, and I reckon he probably will. Yeah, yeah I think that's more than likely. <laughs> yeah. He's been on great form as well. A pair of you have, actually, at the end of the season. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. It is, uh, it's been very, very tight this season, I have to say. I mean, in uh, qualifying, what was there? Maybe two or three tenths between the top five? Uh, it was it was close. I can because bring what a second between the top seven. So uh, yeah, well, insane, exactly, insanely close. Yeah, around uh, a track th- this long, that's uh, yeah, that's insanely close. I was trying to bring the grid up, but apparently I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean you're right because it's quite a long circuit, and in the Renaults even more so. You know, it's all about momentum with the Renaults. Um, here and you know lose a little bit and it's a good tenth two tenths that you can lose just on one of the straights so yeah it's yeah it's all about the momentum just keeping it keeping it steady and yeah keeping it on the track mostly awesome stuff right mate i'm gonna let you go i'm gonna wrap up the stream because i've got an indy 500 to qualify for i've just been knocked out the top <laughs> split so i need to get over <laughs> to get back in there oh no so, well best yeah. of luck to you all right thanks very yeah. much and Cheers, uh, guys. yeah uh, yeah, enjoy your couple of weeks uh, doing, you know, away from the racing. Yeah, well, I'll be in work, but, you know. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Cheers. Right, Sam. On that note, like I said, I am going to wrap it up. I need to get my butt back in that top split. I'm now 34 out of 33. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's not happening. So I know I can run a bit faster. I've been stubborn and only want to do one qualifying session for it. But, yeah, oh, I'll have to admit defeat and get my butt out there and see what I can do. Right, it's always been a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much for that. We've had a great race here. I hope you've enjoyed it, everyone, on the stream. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back, of course, next week um, for another round. But don't forget, to, uh, tomorrow, Saturday, we've got the European V8 Supercar, and then it's the um, BSR Grand Tour on the Sunday. So I think, um, I think we'll both be back for both of those, actually. So, yeah, me and Sam in the booth again. Marco will be joining us for the V8 Supercar. And um, I think Adam, uh, Andrew for the Sunday event as well. So always been a pleasure. Come and check us out over on our own channel as well, Apex Racing TV. Don't forget to subscribe to uh, AOR. But yeah, feel free to send the love over uh, our way as well. Thanks, guys. Been a pleasure as always. We'll catch you again.